It's awkward. It's Tuesday. It's Brooke and Jubal's Awkward Tuesday phone call. A lot of people have regrets in life. I know most of my regrets can be found on police blotters throughout mm. the country. <laughs> Actually, no, I don't really regret those. Those are things that I'm proud of. <laughs> but the guy on the phone that wants to do an Awkward Tuesday phone call today has something that he regrets from seven years ago. Whoa. And he wants to come clean about it. John, how you doing? Doing good. Really glad you guys took my call. Thank you for your email, and thank you for agreeing to do an Awkward Tuesday phone call today. So you have something that's been eating at you for seven years, huh? Yeah. Have you been thinking about this whole time, or has it just gotten worse? You know, there was a time when I was able to push it to the back of my mind and just go on with my life. And I was a little bit scared for, you know, legal action. So I guess I just tried to forget about it. Because it's not a huge deal, but now it's, I can't, I can't get over it. <laughs> I read your email, and I think it's kind of a big deal, actually. Really? <laughs> yeah, John, why don't you tell everybody what your situation is? So seven years ago, I just got out of school. I uh-huh. graduated, and, uh, you know, I was working at an electronics store just working four, five, six hours a day, 30 hours a week, something like that. And, you know, it was, it was okay money, but I could always use a little bit more to go out and hang with the friends, you know, if they were going to a concert or if they were going to a show. And some nights I would take, um, some, nights I would take some of the money out of the till. Uh, and what? I always put it back. I always made sure to put it back. So you would you would basically take out like payday loans from the store that you were working at. Exactly. Yes, that is a good way. I like that. And I, I wouldn't let it go more than a day or two. It was always back before the manager counted it, and it was always back before they went to deposit it at the bank. So it's a victimless crime. You know, I was oh, come on. nobody was but ever going to get hurt. If you always put it back, I mean, you weren't technically stealing money from them. Yeah, whatever. Famous last words. Nobody was ever going to get hurt. That's the thing. One day, they counted the money early, and I'd taken out a couple hundred bucks, and they noticed it, and they oh. were not happy. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I'd be surprised they were super pumped about it. Like, hey, somebody's been stealing money out of the till. That's awesome. <laughs> so what'd they do when they found out? that you've been taking money? They called everybody in to a meeting and tried to find out who had done it. I was actually not there that day, so I missed it. But apparently nobody confessed. But one of my coworkers, Adrian, ended up taking the fall. She got fired. No. Oh, my God. Did she know that you were the one that was taking the money? No, nobody really knew. <laughs> so why did they fire her? They just assumed that she did it? She had had previous run-ins with management, and uh, I think everyone just assumed that she was her. She was kind of sketchy. I, I don't know. I never stepped up. She took the fall. The next day I came into work, she wasn't there, and everyone said she got fired for the missing money. Is this girl a friend of yours? She is not a friend. I haven't seen her. I actually just ran into some mutual friends the other day, and I got her number because I want to make this right, and I wanted to call you guys to get your advice. Why not? I mean, if she's not a friend of yours, and I hate to be the bad guy here, but it sometimes is my thing. If she's not your friend and you don't have any relationship with her, why come clean seven years from the time it happened? Better late than never. So, I would have a horribly guilty conscience over something mm-hmm. like that. How much longer did you work there? I was there another six months. Oh, my God. Did you just feel like the biggest ass ever? <laughs> I felt pretty bad, but, I, you know, I was able to get along. You, you'd be... I don't know. You'd be surprised. In the short term, it was easy to keep going. But as time's gone on, it's, it's like grown and grown and grown like a shadow in my mind. And it, <laughs> I, I can't take it anymore. Why didn't you stand up earlier and go, it was me. I took the money. Don't fire her. I did need the money. And, you know, I'm not proud of it, but I was pretty much an irresponsible jack <laughs> back then. All right. So, so you want to feel better about yourself and you want to call her today and tell her that she was fired from her job seven years ago because of you. I think that's the least I can do. The least? <laughs> the least. Oh, my gosh. Did you continue to steal money after that, too? Here and there. <laughs> but you learned your lesson, and you always put the money back. You never missed a day after that, did you? Never money. missed a single day. See, life is all about learning important <laughs> lessons. If you're going to steal money from the register, make sure you put it back every time. Otherwise, somebody else could get fired, and you're going to feel bad seven years later. <laughs> It was a teachable moment. (laughs) All right. So you know how the Awkward Tuesday phone call works. We'll give you our advice, and then you make the Awkward Tuesday phone call. We'll play a song, come back, and do it then, okay? Perfect. All right, just hang on. It's awkward. It's Tuesday.
It's Brooke and Jubal's Awkward Tuesday phone call. John is on the phone with us today. He wants to call a girl named Adrian. They used to work together seven years ago. I say used to work together because he got her fired. (laughs) John used to take money from the cash register where he worked, and he would return it every day before it got counted. One day he forgot, (laughs) and management found out, and they called everybody in. And they blamed this one girl for doing it because she's had problems with management before. She was fired seven years ago. He just recently ran into her, and he feels like he needs to come clean. John, are you about ready to make your Awkward Tuesday phone call? When you say it like that, it sounds a lot worse than than it was in my head. Dude, it's bad. (laughs) It's it's, really bad. I think it's that bad. Yeah. (laughs) I do have some good advice for you, though. Okay? Please. And this is advice where everybody comes out a winner. You call her up, and you tell her that you know... She didn't take the money. Okay. And then you tell her that you know who took the money, and you blame it on somebody else that you worked with. <laughs> Everyone wins. Everybody wins there, because then she gets the feeling like, oh, good, they know I didn't take the money. That guy's the bad guy. You're not the bad guy. And then you ask her out after. It's a triple what? win situation. Ask her out. That is a triple win situation. I don't know about that. John, you hear a win-win situation, so I just gave you a triple win. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if someone's going to work. It sounds good, but I, I just got to come clean. I got to come clean. We got to call her. I don't want to make any any more lies. I don't want to dig myself any deeper. I just got to get this off my chest. Do you know what I think, John? I think that you owe her the six months of pay you made when you kept your job for six months longer and she got fired. Whoa. Well, I can't do that. <laughs> Let's not get crazy. I don't now. feel that bad. I'm not going to offer that up. <laughs> All right. Well, are you ready to make your Awkward Tuesday phone call? Let's get this over with. Yeah, I think you just got to just do it. Just rip the Band-Aid off Mm -hmm. and tell her that you got her fired seven years ago. (laughs) All right, cool. (laughs) Good luck. All right, man, here we go. I'm going to dial the phone number. Hello? Hi, is this Adrian? Uh, Yeah, this is she. Um, this is John. Uh, you probably, probably don't remember me. We used to work together at about seven or so years ago. Um, okay. Um, what is this regarding? I was around when you were let go from that job. Um, from... Right. Okay. I'm sorry, how did you get my number? Uh, I ran into Amanda the other day and I was asking about you because I got it. There's something I have to confess. The reason you got fired, it's, it wasn't your fault. I was the one who was taking the money. Wait, what? Yeah, I, I know it's a long time ago, but it's been eating me up and I, I got your number because I just wanted to come clean. I wanted to make it right somehow. I don't understand what the hell is going on. So, you remember getting fired, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we were all a little crazy back then, and I would sometimes take a little bit of money out to get me through the week, and I always, always put it back. But the week that you got fired, something was going on. I don't know if it was a new manager or something, but they counted the money a day early, I didn't have a chance to put the money back, and you got fired. And I Wait. wanted to say I'm sorry. I am so sorry. Why the hell would you do that? That is a sh- up thing to do. I, I just can't. How could you, you do that? I, I, I how could you like I, let that happen to another never person? Meant for you you to don't really fired. know. I never meant for anyone to get hurt. It was just a dumb thing. And I am so sorry that you got fired. It's been eating me up inside. I just, I had to call you. I had to apologize. And if there's anything I can do to make it up to you, please, just anything. Well, it would have meant something, actually, maybe, if you would let me know, like, then. Like, you could have told the manager. You could have fessed up. You could have prevented what happened from happening. But you, I couldn't have done that, Adrian. They would have pressed charges. And well, that, do you know what happened to me after that? After I lost that job? Like, I, I was unemployed for, like, I, I don't know, four months? Like, I lost my apartment. 
You know? I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I mean, like, that sorry, like, that doesn't really mean now, you know? Is there anything I can do to make it up to you? <laughs> no. I mean, no, not really. Okay, well, yeah, you could, you know, because, like, it was, it f***ing tore me up that people thought that about me, you know? So if know. there's anything you could do, like, you could go back to the store and, like, wear a f***ing sandwich board saying, I stole from seven years ago. And look what an ass I am. <laughs> what the f*** was that? Hi, Adrian. <laughs> Wait, who are you? This is Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the Morning. What the f*** is going on here? I don't understand. It's a segment we do on our show called The Awkward Tuesday Phone Call. John didn't know how to break the news to you that he got you fired seven years ago. And he wanted our advice, so we gave him our advice as long as he called you and came clean. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so this is like a real public apology is what this is. Yeah. Right? Well, he wanted to know what he could do to make things better, and apparently you would like it if he publicly shamed himself. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's like... There's nothing else, you know, like that was years ago. Adrian, I'm so sorry. You should be sorry. I don't know what else I can say. I'm sorry it's taken me seven years. I'm sorry you got fired. No one was ever supposed to get hurt. It was just a freak accident, and you took the fall. <laughs> freak ac- freak John, accident? John, a freak accident would be if something just happened to you. You were taking money from the register, and then you didn't replace it. But it, it. Did, just, it did just happen. It wasn't. They weren't supposed to check it on Wednesday. <laughs> you realize you're at fault here, right, John? I could have behaved better, but the plan was virtually foolproof. No one was ever supposed to get hurt or fired. It wasn't supposed to, but it did. <laughs> like, I don't really understand how a plan to take money that isn't yours without telling anyone how anyone could ever argue that that is foolproof. Or right. I always put it. I always put it back. Always. No, not it always. wasn't like I was stealing. <laughs> well, but obviously, like you thought that argument would not hold up in a court of law, which is why you let me take the fall. And that's why I'm calling you, Adrian. I'm so sorry. Are you doing this because you actually, like, care about what happened to me and how I feel? Or are you just doing this to, like, make your conscience feel better because you're a selfish ass? You know what? It might be a little bit of both, but I'll do whatever it takes to make this right, Adrian. What can I do? I don't really want to, like, see your face or anything. But you can go to that guy and wear a sandwich board. I'll have my friend, I'll have Amanda come, and she'll take a picture, and then, <laughs> and then maybe you will finally get some kind of, like, punishment for the stupid way you behave. I will wear a sandwich board at You tell me when and where I'm there. Oh, uh, really? Will you make the sandwich board? Will you make it yourself? If you would make it for me, Adrian, that would speed the process along. <laughs> <laughs> He's not very good at crafts, yeah. okay? <laughs> Do you want to make the sandwich board for him, Adrian? That way you can put on it whatever you want. Yeah. Um, you know, like, I'm, yeah. I'm a pretty busy lady, but yeah, I can do that. I can do that. I can get a big old f***ing marker. Okay. <laughs> Let's do this. All right. So, John, you're down to be publicly shamed to say you're sorry. I deserve it, and I am ready to get it on. Oh, my God. Okay. I'm going to be driving around all day. <laughs> it's not like I'm going to be out there all day, guys. We're going to do, I'm talking 15 minutes max, quick picture, and then we're done. No, no you can't cop out, John. No. If you want to really say you're sorry, you should be out there for at least three hours. Four hours, right? Like half a shift. <laughs> Four hours of standing, and then anyone who recognizes you from the radio gets to punch you in the <laughs> I think that's a, that is... that's a great idea. So if you see somebody standing outside of an electronics store wearing a sandwich board that says that he stole money from there and got somebody fired, boom, Just give him one good shot right where it counts. Thanks a lot, guys. Broken Jubal in the morning.